Hey, you, yeah, you, how the heck are you? Now tell me something real quick. Have you ever heard of the hit title Rocket League? Well, you're in luck because today we're doing a comprehensive review. And for those of you who don't know what the premise of Rocket League is, no, it's not a league of rockets or even rockets who play league. No, it's none of those things. What it is, is rocket powered battle RC soccer cars. Didn't expect that, did you? But the, the name was condensed for good reason. So it's Rocket League. Now, for those of you who are new here on this channel, you will find Let's Plays, reviews, gaming news, and more. We proudly focus on all around honest, joyful, and gratifying entertainment. Now, if that tickles your fancy, <laughs> then please consider smashing that subscribe button and dinging the bell to make sure you don't miss my latest post. Now that we've got that out of the way, I'm enthusiastic. This is Crunch Fuel. Ready, set, game. Okay, now where were we? Oh, that's right. Rocket Powered Battle RC Soccer Cars or Rocket League is a game developed by Psyonix, a San Diego, California based game development company. Shout out to SD. That's where I grew up. So that's pretty awesome. Psyonix was recently acquired by Epic Games and has a few other titles they've worked on, but none as successful as Rocket League. Now, the reason I actually keep mentioning Rocket Powered Battle RC Soccer Cars is because Rocket League is actually a sequel. And the original game's title is, you ready for this? Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars. Phew, that's a mouthful. And yes, guys, that was the original game's full name. So I'm pretty glad they shortened it. Anyway, the original title was released in 2008, and while it didn't do as well overall, it garnered a tight fan base for those of the people, at least the people that found it. And it paved the way for Rocket League. Rocket League was released in July of 2015 and Psyonix knew they needed a different approach to market the game. So they decided to release the game for free for one whole month on PlayStation Plus. The rest guys is history. Rocket League became the number one PlayStation Plus offered game of all time up to that point. And from there, it just took off. But why? What is so special about Rocket League and what's the game really about? Well, guys, I hope to bring a special insight to this game review as I've been on the Rocket League train for at least two and a half years. So fair warning overall, I have a biased opinion about this game because I'm already a fan, but I'll stick to the facts so you can make your own decision if you want to get it or not. Rocket League is a competitive online game with the main description on Google reading vehicular soccer video game. The objective of the game is to use your vehicle to strike an oversized ball into your opponent's net and score goals by any means necessary. Players are pinned against each other in an enclosed arena and battle it out until one team comes out on top. If a game ends in a tie after the time period is over, the players will duke it out in a sudden death showdown. Sudden death showdown! Sound simple? Well, it's not. Hitting the ball, the most basic concept of the game, requires a certain level of car control. And to do it well, well, it requires extensive levels of car control. Your vehicle can be controlled in a variety of ways. Let's start by going over some of the basics. So yes, you can drive forward and backwards and you can steer left and right and you can boost to, to go faster. Those are all pretty standard and expected for a game that's main focus is vehicles. But what sets this game apart, guys, is all the fancy finesse you can also do with the car. You can jump, you can flip, you can drive on walls and ceilings. Heck guys, you can even fly and with the limitless ability to control your car's movements with these capabilities you can basically do anything using a combination of these controls allows you to put a level of finesse on your maneuverability that is your own heck people have even invented tricks of their own like the musty flip for instance oh. Barry Pete gets the goal two to one for rocket adding some style here look at this one 
Pashi winning that 50-50, a wide open net for Fairy Peak. He actually scoops it. Oh. That's cool. That's called a musty flick. The musty flick. Yeah. He musty flicked that ball it's, it's right cool. out of the air. It's great. The game has an incredible, almost limitless skill ceiling, and it's awesome. Players can choose to play in a few types of playlists or even game modes, but the main being the competitive playlist. In the competitive playlist, you have 1v1, 2v2s, standards, which is 3v3, but it allows party queuing, and then solo standard, which is 3v3, but it only queues in solo, so no parties are allowed to, to queue together in that mode. In addition, there are other game modes like Drop Shot, Snow Day, Hoops, as well as Rumble, and more. Psyonix also holds events every few months featuring other game modes like Spike Rush, Heat Seeker, and Boomer Ball. Usually those are available for a limited time. But as I mentioned, the main game mode is the regular competitive playlist. There is also a free play playlist as well that doesn't count toward your rank and is a great way to practice. Speaking of practice, remember that skill ceiling I was talking about? Well, to get good, to get good, you are going to need practice. If you think you're going to start playing this game and be good right away, you are poorly mistaken. The game mechanics alone take time to get used to, so get ready to practice. High level players and pros spend majority of their time training. If you want to get good at this game, you better get used to that word, training. There are a variety of ways you can practice and sharpen your skills. So there's a training playlist with both preset training packs made by Psyonix as well as player made options. And then if you have a, if you are on a PC, you will also actually have the workshops that you can subscribe to on Steam that take you out of the arena for some additional training. Let's talk car customization because any good car game has the customization at the forefront of its focus and guys i'm a huge car nerd so customization is important to me in games while rocket league hosts rc style mini cars that are nothing like real cars they have a wonderful and extensive customizability to them so you can of course change your car's body but once that's chosen each body type can be further customized with decals paint finishes, wheels, rocket boosts, toppers, antennas, or is it antennae, goal explosions, trails, and engine audio. And then on top of that, each one of those types of items come with the trims, special trims of their own. So the body types have trims and things like that. So the customization to, is really just endless. This allows for you to bring a bit of personality to the arena. Personality is everything, guys. Bring that personality. Hey, it's my personality. It's coming. It's showing. This is my personality. Boop, boop. This allows for you to bring a bit of personality to the arena. Yeah. Bring that damn personality. Bring that personality. Bring that personality. Bring your personality. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Show who you are. Bring that personality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I want to emphasize, 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 emphasize. I want to emphasize that all of these customizations are cosmetic only and do not affect the performance of the vehicle in any way. All of the vehicles in Rocket League perform exactly the same aside from one factor, their hitboxes. The hitbox is essentially the area or invisible box around the car that allows it to make contact with the ball as well as its surroundings. So since each vehicle is shaped differently, this means their hitboxes are all different. There are videos out there that claim that some cars have advantages over others due to their turning radius and hitboxes as well as other factors. However, Psyonix has confirmed that statistically, they don't see one car beating another. Some advantages people think they might be getting with a particular car may be an advantage with their style of play, but it's not an advantage with everyone's style of play. So in essence, 
you will need to choose a card that best suits your playing style, but there's no measurable advantage to one car over another. Quick tip though, however, most high level players seem to use the Octane and the Dominus. That's the most used car in the game, statistically. But get creative, try out different options. Now, the arenas in the game are all the same size and shape in default game modes. In custom matches, the game offers varying arena types and sizes that you can kind of mess around with, but you won't see this in regular online game modes. The game currently has 13 standard arenas with all the same specs, but all all different themes. The backgrounds of the arenas feature astonishing views and visuals with creative animated level design in the backgrounds. So just be careful, don't be distracted by it or you might end up missing them all. Okay, let's talk progression system. Each player has a level that's displayed at the bottom left of their screen. As you level up, you unlock new items at random. This level really doesn't mean anything and no one seems to pay much attention to it. What matters is your rank. In competitive mode, players are put into ranks based on their skill level. The ranks break down to bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, champ, and grand champ. Each rank has three tiers. For example, the bronze rank would have bronze one, bronze two, and bronze three. And then each tier is broken even further down into four divisions. For example, bronze one division one, bronze one division two, bronze one division three, and bronze one division four. Now, before moving to bronze two, you would have to move through four divisions of bronze one. So the ranking system is pretty extensive. This ranking system is seasonal and is reset every about three to five months. And when a season begins, each player starts off as unranked. They will have to play 10 qualifying matches to be ranked, and this applies separately for each game mode. So if you play 10 qualifiers in 1v1s and you rank in bronze one, you will not be ranked in twos or standard. You will need to play 10 qualifiers for each of those game modes to get your rank. Each season also has its own season rewards, as well as a season pass that's called the Rocket Pass. The Rocket Pass is like any other you would see in modern games like Fortnite or Call of Duty and has both a paid version and a free version, with the free version dishing out items way less frequently than the paid. The Rocket Pass has 70 tiers. Once you hit the 70 tiers, you can continue to level up, but what you will do is just get random variations of the items that were already in the Rocket Pass. So you'll get little different trims or colors of the items that you've already gotten. Now as for the season rewards. Essentially, you will be rewarded with an item at the end of each season based on what rank you qualify for. Now this part gets a little tricky. Once you are ranked, the season rewards progression will unlock starting with bronze. You will need to win 10 games of bronze rank or better to unlock the bronze season reward then silver and gold and so forth. Each season reward has a specific item and different variations of that item for each rank that it's rewarded to. So let's say the season reward is a type of goal explosion or a wheel. If you end the season with a season reward of gold, you will earn all the bronze, silver and gold variations of that item. I hope that makes sense. I'm pleased to say, since it wasn't always the case, but Rocket League features cross-platform play between all three major gaming outlets, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It's nice not to be limited, and you can freely dish out the butt kicking on any console. The booty is kicking, kicking the booty. The butt kicking, the butt kicking. The game features an awesome soundtrack with music by artists that aren't usually mainstream. I've added a plethora of songs from Rocket League to my Spotify playlist, so music is taken care of. Over the years, Rocket League has gone through a variety of changes to get to where it is today. Most changes, I can honestly say, have been good. 
and have made the game better and more enjoyable over the years. But recently, in December 2019, there was a major change to a key component to the game. You see, as you play the game, you naturally acquire many different items just by leveling up and playing, but there are other ways to score items in Rocket League. And what used to be a typical crate system that allowed players to randomly gain items from crates that were randomly acquired by playing has completely changed. So in December 2019, brought the Blueprints update, and I don't like it. Essentially, by playing the game, you are rewarded blueprints. These blueprints consist of wheels, goal explosions, all the different types of items you can get in the game. When a player acquires a blueprint, if they want to, they can use game credits to turn that blueprint into an item. The idea isn't horrible. The problem is how expensive it is to build a good blueprint and how you acquire game credits. A rare black market item costs 2000 plus game credits easily and game credits are earned very rarely from the rocket pass. You get 100 here and 100 there and in a single season you might see around 1000 credits rewarded to you. Other than that, you have to buy credits. There's no way to really earn credits or it just doesn't earn if you know the random ways you can earn them is just not enough. And to get 3000 credits costs $24.99. Essentially, a black market item can cost upwards of 20 plus dollars easy and can get much higher than that for some of the rarer black market items. At that rate, it would take me two seasons to earn enough credits without having to buy them to get a base level black market item. That's just too expensive and I really, really hope they fix that aspect of the game in the future. I think a lot of people do. Other than that, Honestly guys, Rocket League is a very fun and competitive game that never seems to get old. There's just nothing more satisfying than sending a goal across the map or breaking ankles and finessing your way up to the field and making a fool out of your opponents to just casually tap the ball in or connecting with your teammates past mid-air to send a beam of a shot that cannot be defended. And competitively, this game can get extremely high level. I told you, there's a huge skill ceiling. Rocket League is so skill-based that it's an official televised esport with a huge fan base. All in all, Rocket League is a special game that has gained many fans over the years me included. Anyone can play it and have fun. It's a great game to play with friends or by yourself. You can mess around or you can be serious and try to turn pro. There's really room for all. I will rate Rocket League an 8 out of 10. And honestly, if it weren't for the blueprints update that came in December, I would give it a 9 out of 10 or even higher. Now, as I mentioned before, that rating is biased since I'm a fan of the game, but to be honest, there's a reason I'm a fan. It's just a really well made game. Now, you gotta go get out there and see for yourself. I'll see you on the field, kid. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and watching my video. If you made it this far, you truly are amazing and I really appreciate the time that you spent. Now, I want to hear from you guys, so let me know down in the comments below if you thought that this was a good review, if you are considered playing the game, or if you've played it before, and if so, what it is, what is it that you like about the game? I'm a huge fan and I hope that I've converted some of you guys potentially. But if you're already a fan, let me know. Let's play. Um, this is one of my favorite games of all time. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please consider smashing that subscribe button, ding the bell, make sure you don't miss my latest post. And I'll see you guys next time.